Shields up, Ironbreakers. In January 2024, we witnessed what was probably one of the most successful early access launches of an indie video game pretty much ever. The name of that video game is Pal World, and Pal World managed to sell somewhere north of 25 million copies within its first month of release alone. These copies were sold across the Steam and Xbox platforms, but it is nonetheless incredibly impressive, particularly for an independent studio. Now, usually I don't really tend to play survival games because of all the gauge management where you have to be like, oh, your character's thirsty, your character's hot, your character's cold, your character's hungry. Having to manage all of those things in video games is usually a turnoff for me, so I kind of like avoid the survival genre. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people that are really into those types of things, and you know, more power to you. I hope you continue to enjoy survival games for a long time to come. However, I had a couple of friends basically talk me into trying out Pal World and I ended up playing it with them. And in Pal World, those survival elements were not as prevalent, which caused me to actually enjoy the game quite a bit. Now, about a week later, actually a little bit less than a week, another game was coming out which was called Enshrouded. Now, Enshrouded actually looked like it was going to be something that I was interested in, but again, it was a survival game, so I was very hesitant to take the plunge and jump into it. But on the very last day, I figured, you know what, let me see if I can scrounge up a couple of codes for me and a couple of friends and we can jump in multiplayer and maybe it'll be a fun time because I did enjoy Pal World. So in a lot of ways, because I enjoyed Pal World, I decided to give Enshrouded a chance. And you know, the people working with uh, Enshrouded PR, they were able to give me three codes and I was like, okay, let's check this out. Let's see what it's all about. Those live streams are in the channel. And one of the things that really surprised me when I jumped into Enshrouded was just how serious the game was. And you guys might be wondering, what do you mean by serious? And the thing is, if you watch the trailer that they released ahead of the Game Awards, the Enshrouded trailer was very much a comedic type trailer with comedy narrative and, you know, you could see the characters doing stuff like crafting, building, exploring, combat, but it was all very presented in a comedic fashion. So I wasn't expecting to have to take the game seriously. I was like, oh, we'll play. This will be like a fun stream thing. Everybody's going to get a laugh out of it. But the reality was when I started playing the game, I was instantly corpse running. If you actually go back and watch my very first stream of Entrouded, you'll see me just like I jump into the shroud and I'm just getting completely obliterated left, right and center because I had no idea what I was doing and monsters kept killing me and I wanted to go back and pick up the stuff that I was dropping and then monsters would kill me again and it was just like death run after death run after death run until eventually my friends join in and things got a little bit more manageable. But suffice it to say, it was a very strong first impressions on this game like the very first day that i played it i emailed the the people who are running pr for uh, keen games who is the developer behind the studio and i asked them hey is there a chance that i can speak with somebody from the team because i think you guys are doing something very interesting here the level of ambition that you guys have with this game is actually quite impressive and it'd be cool to have a chat and that actually materialized last week and that's why i'm making this video right now which is kind of like of an introduction to enshrouded for those of you that maybe missed the launch window of enshrouded and you don't know what the game is about because you're either playing pal world or because you just joined the channel at a later time i wanted to make you guys aware of what this game is so that when the cons cast episode goes live you will be aware of how the game works the game that we're going to be talking about in that particular podcast so what are the pillars of Enshrouded? And those pillars to me are exploration, combat, crafting, and building. Now, Enshrouded is built on voxel technology, which I understand not a lot of people are going to understand, but one of the easiest ways to explain what voxel technology is, is Minecraft. If you've ever played Minecraft or if you've seen somebody play Minecraft, you will be aware of how it works. You punch things, things break down, they give you materials, and then you can use those materials to build other things. And you can do this all throughout the world. Now, one of the main differences between the world of Enshrouded and the world of Minecraft is that Minecraft is procedurally generated, whereas Enshrouded is not. The world of Enshrouded is static, it is hand-developed. I mean, I don't know necessarily if it was hand development. I, I assume that they used some procedural technology to generate the map, but then they kind of like sculpt it by hand. That would be my assumption. That was actually one of the things that I was supposed to ask them, but I got so lost in conversation in the podcast that I neglected to ask that. 
But anyway, the, the point of the matter is the world in Enshrouded is static, which allows them to do much more handcrafted experience, direct players to different points of interest and all of that stuff, as opposed to just generating everything so that it's different every time. This also allows them to really customize the different biomes that they're going to be putting into the game, but fundamentally, the whole point of voxel technology is that you get to change the world however you see fit. To give you guys an idea, for instance, this game has a glider. Very much kind of like, you could almost think like Zelda, except this glider goes really fast because it's almost like a wingsuit, right? So your character glides super fast. And it's really cool for exploration. Not only has a glider, but it also has a grappling hook. But anyways, the glider is the center point of what I wanted to talk about now. Because the game has the, a glider, one of the things that I wanted to do when deciding where I was going to build my base, because this game allows you to build a base, as pretty much most survival games do, I was like, oh, I want to build a base on top of a mountain, a really tall mountain, because that is going to open up me being able to glide to different locations across the map. So I looked for the centermost mountain in the game that was also one of the biggest mountains in the game, which is actually called Pillars of Creation, and then I grabbed one of the crafting tools, the pickaxe, and I went to the bottom of that mountain because I couldn't find a way to scale it organically. And I went to the bottom of the mountain and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to dig straight up. And I just started hacking away at the mountain and slowly making my climb through the insides of the mountain to basically get to the top. That is one of the things that you can do in a voxel-like world. You can change the way that the world looks. Now the world does regenerate over time, but you can still like get all the way up the mountain and then build a base there. And that's kind of like what I did, which is really cool. That is one of the, the advantages of Voxel World. So as you are watching this gameplay in the background, just keep that in mind. Anything that you see on screen can be destroyed. You can throw grenades and you can change the lay of the land. Say, for instance, if there's a mount, a little hill that you want to climb, and it's like just a little bit taller than you would be able to usually get through with your jumping, you can just mine it with a pickaxe, make it smaller, or you can throw a grenade on it and it'll explode and make a hole so that you can kind of like jump in there and then throw more grenades and make more holes and keep jumping and keep basically doing whatever you want. You can also just like build bridges if you want to. You can build a base pretty much anywhere and you can teleport anywhere and you know, there's just a, a certain level of freedom that you don't get in a lot of video games that do not use voxel technology. Now beyond Using voxel technology, one of the things that also surprised me was the action combat, because the game is played in third person, which is usually the uh, the perspective that I tend to prefer whenever it comes to experiencing games. I prefer third person over first person. I just find it to be more interesting, and you can see the way that your character looks with armor and all of that stuff. If you watch, most of the games that I play here on the channel are usually third person games, like, you know, Dark Souls, Monster Hunter, and, you know, a bunch of other different titles they will usually be third person games and that is just kind of my preference so you got action combat in a third person uh in a, in a third person perspective and you have stuff like you can parry you can also block if you're playing sword and shield you also have two-handed weapons if you prefer to use that there's also ranged combat in the form of bow and arrow there's different types of arrows there's like poison arrows blunt arrows uh, i don't know if there's fire arrows there might be I, I don't really do ranged combat but just be aware that's another type of combat you have in there on top of it you also have spell casting so even though the gameplay that you're going to be watching is going to be very much vanilla sword and shield because I spec my character as a tank a little bit more uh, about that just be aware that there's more diversity to the combat than what you're watching there's still spell casting and all of these other things that you can go ahead and do but even as simple as the combat is it already has a certain degree of uh, of like addictiveness to it because you can still parry you can still dodge roll you can do jumping attacks and a bunch of other things, and you also have grenades that you can throw, etc., etc. So combat, simple, but satisfying, and it is something that they're still working on. I actually go into greater depth when it comes to that in the cons cast, so feel free to, again, subscribe if you want to watch that later. But yeah, that's the, the combat system, which personally, I enjoy. The traversal, very enjoyable, using the, the glider, as well as breaking the terrain around you, as well as using grappling hooks in certain situations. You can even craft the grapple points in your base if you want to. Like, you can have a base that's all about grappling and doing all of that cool 
cool stuff as well. Uh, and on top of it, uh, another interesting thing was the skill tree. The game actually has a skill tree that allows you to kind of like specialize yourself in different roles. So I spec my character as a tank. There's actually an aggro mechanic to this game that allows me to get more aggro than my friends. So when I was playing, I would have a friend that was playing bow, another friend that was playing uh, spellcaster. And basically I would tank, I would get the brunt of the, the enemies to come at me and they would just shoot them from range, which is really, really cool. Even though with their most recent update, which we'll get into in a little bit, they kind of like broke that in one of the dungeons. Not, not sure what's going on with that, but yeah. So that's another thing, combat skills almost like an mmo light you can have up the 16 player multiplayer but the game is designed in a way that it can be played solo if you choose to do so uh but yeah then you also have an in-depth crafting system as a matter of fact of the gear that you guys are watching me play with right now uh the helmet i found by in, in chests as i was doing a dungeon i found this uh i found this helmet which is the one that i'm using the gloves were crafted, the armor piece was crafted, the boots were crafted, the shield was crafted, and then the sword I also found. And the sword I actually upgraded to maximum because that sword has like this, uh, well, one of the swords, because I'm, I'm using two swords throughout this video, but like the one that has the green glow, that sword actually has like a special AoE effect, uh, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so an in-depth crafting system, and the crafting system is not just for the purpose of crafting armor, you also get to craft specific things for your base. And then there's also a building aspect, which with voxels is actually quite powerful. Because you know how in a lot of these survival type games, you have your prefabricated type of things. Uh, you can just put down a wall, and then you can get a door, and then you can get all of these things. With voxels, the interesting thing is that you can get right down to uh, individual blocks and you can alter them after you place them. They use this uh, hybrid type system to, to do your your building, which is actually really cool. I ended up making this, uh, this neat looking castle tower almost that has four little towers up top. And I just really like it, even though it's a super simplistic design. I appreciate what I was able to do with the system because first I just built like this big cube and then I had like these little towers that protruded from the outside that were only possible to do because again the voxel system allows you to slightly modify and get some more precision into the way that those things are built and it was pretty cool. The game also has a farming type system so you can like set up a farm for certain materials. There's a uh, gathering involved as well so you'll be expected to use a pickaxe to gather like different ores and stuff like that for crafting as well as you will need to get salt in order to dry certain furs to get different materials out of it the the crafting is actually the crafting and gathering is actually fairly complex sometimes i still have to look some stuff up because you just tend to forget but there's quite a bit of in-depth systems and quite a bit of ambition to this title to give you guys an idea you're looking at this game right and you're thinking to yourselves, wow, there, there's a lot of systems interplaying here, right? This must be a pretty big team. There's 60. The team size is 60. This is one of the questions that I asked during the podcast. And I was like, damn, the level of ambition for only 60 people is very impressive. Now, again, do keep in mind, Enshrouded is still very much in early access, but they did just release a major update, which is one of the reasons why they weren't able to get back to me to do the podcast episode because they were too busy working on this massive update that they just did, which is called Hollow Halls. Now, Hollow Halls essentially added like a brand new dungeon to each of the game's biomes, which I think is like four new dungeons, if I'm not mistaken, which started like level 10, 15, 20, and 25 is like the intended levels of, of these dungeons. And I've only done one of the dungeons so far with a friend of mine. We went into the level 10 dungeon and yeah, the, the, the ending of the dungeon was insane. Like tons and tons of mobs coming all over the place, just completely swarming us, which was uh, some of the most challenging stuff that we've done. There's also bosses uh, throughout the world, which require a little bit of strategy, pattern recognition, all of that stuff. So there's already quite a bit of stuff in the game, even though again, it is still early access. But fundamentally, I was very uh, impressed with what they were able to do. And uh, I think it's an interesting title and it's one to keep an eye on. I'm not saying go out and buy it right now if you're someone that usually doesn't play early access games. But keep an eye on it, particularly if you like, um, 
you know, uh, co-op games. I think that this is much better when played in co-op, even though, again, like I said, it can be played pretty much entirely solo, and that is the developer intention. I can kind of, like, confirm that at this point after sitting down with the creative director. But, uh, yeah, hopefully at this point you guys will be a little bit more familiar with what Enshrouded is all about and whether or not it is a game that you are interested in. But, like I said, uh, at some point next week, either Monday or Tuesday, you can expect to see a cons cast where I'm going to be talking with the creative director of this game. And hopefully you guys will tune in and check it out. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out in any way, if you were more informed, uh, leave it a like, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of that. And let me know if you've played Enshrouded, what do you think about it? Or if you are considering checking out Enshrouded, let me know in the comment section down below. Stay strong, stay safe, peace out.